Speedway Report is produced and broadcast by the Zeus Radio Network for Racers Reunion Radio. Well, NASCAR kept some late yellow flags in their pockets yesterday at Talladega. Uh, a couple of big short track races were almost next door neighbors, and Road Atlanta held a dandy finale for the IMSA Sports Car Championship. Well, all this and more is coming up. Welcome to Speedway Report, Monday, October the 15th, 2018. From the shores of Lake Norman in Ray City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina, I'm Patrick Reynolds, and thank you for joining the fastest half hour in racing. Also, I might be the bravest half hour in racing as I'm sporting a white shirt after Labor Day. Hey, that is just the way I roll. Let's take a trip around the Motor Week Live victory lane lap because I have no fashion sense anyway. I'm a guy. Uh, I'll tell you who won what. Still lots going on as we stroll through the autumn and championships and racing. Lots of good stuff coming up and naturally some complaints. The Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Tour raced 500 miles in uh, Talladega yesterday. Eric Almarola found his way to victory lane for his second career win, first under the green flag. He was due a few times this year uh, with that Stuart Haas Ford. He's been strong a lot, less than a half a lap away from winning the Daytona 500. Came close at New Hampshire, claimed close at Dover. Uh, winds up, goes to the round of eight with the victory in the playoffs. Gosh, seems like Danica Patrick left that ride just a year too early because I'm sure, well, she'd probably be enjoying all that success if she was in the seat. But Amarola's to the winner. Truck Series raced 250 miles in Talladega on Saturday afternoon. Timothy Peters, good dude. He's been a guest on this show before. Uh, wound up in victory lane. Plenty of crashing, damaged, roughed up trucks. Talladega kind of looks like Martinsville at day's end. NASCAR's Wayland Modified Tour was part of the World Series in Thompson, Connecticut. 150 laps yesterday afternoon on the high bank, five-eighths of a mile. Justin Bonsignor already clinched the championship, rolls into Thompson, Comes in and wins. He broke out the broom. He went four for four and ran the table in Thompson, Connecticut in the 2018 season. Uh, this guy was called a future champ several years ago. I believe Jaws did that, Mike Jarecki. Uh, I talked to him. Could have been Pernas Siglio, could have been Matt Dillner. I'm not sure. Well, some of those Long Island guys we've had on the show before I asked them, I said, what? You know, who's the next big uh, modified name to come out of Long Island? And they they called out Salamito, obviously, Timmy Salamito, and uh, Justin Bonsignor is a couple of guys to watch. There's spot on the money. Those two uh, definitely should be doing for the championship in 2019 on the Mod Tour. NASCAR's K&N Pro Series West Tour was in Roseville, California. Cole Rouse was the winner there on Saturday night. Uh, let's see. IMSA, goodness gracious, the, the finale in the Petit Le Mans, the uh, IMSA Series finale in Road Atlanta was won by Wayne Taylor Racing. The co-drivers Ryan hunter Ray, Ranger Vendezenda, and Jordan Taylor. Big finish to this race after 10 hours. We'll, we'll talk about that and dissect this in a little bit. Close to home here in Charlotte, North Carolina, NHRA brought their countdown playoff system to the Z-Max Dragway, and we're going to talk about some strong runs by the usual cast of characters. In top fuel, Steve Torrance took the win. Torrance is now four for four in NHRA countdown races this year. Now he's the first competitor in any category to win four straight races during NHRA's countdown to the championships. As soon as they came out of this playoff system, nobody's won four straight. He's also the longest winning streak in NHRA since Tony Schumacher won seven straight top fuel races in 2008. Now, Torrance bested Chris Messinas, Laria Pritchett, and uh, Schumacher on his way to the final round win against Brittany Force. In funny car, Ron Caps defeated Dale Creasy Jr., and uh, points leader Robert Height and Tim Wilkerson, uh, excuse me, he defeated Creasy, Robert Height, and Tim Wilkerson en route to the final round win against J.R. Todd. Now, with two races left in the season, Height, holds an 11-point lead over Todd in Funny Car. In Pro Stock, Jason Line outran Bo Butner, Jay Coughlin Jr., and fast qualifier Drew Skillman on his way to a final round win against Tanner Gray. Big, big win for Line. Why? This makes 15 straight seasons with a win for Line. I see how hard it is to win one race 
at all ever, period, in your lifetime. This guy's won for 15 straight seasons. I, I'm always mastered or, you know, just amazed by guys that master their sport like that. On the two-wheel bikes, Pro Stock Motorcycle, Matt Smith, Best of Karen Stouffer, Scotty Polachek, and Angel Sampi, en route to the final round win over Chip Ellis. Remember Karen Stouffer, she's been on this show before as well. Jumping over to the dirt, uh, the World of Outlaws Sprint Cars tried to race in Jacksonville, Illinois. That event was rained out and canceled. Uh, expect Jacksonville to be back on the schedule in 2019. Saturday, Terre Haute, Indiana. A little chilly there. Brad Sweet was hot. He took the A main. And last night at Rossburg, Ohio, the Big E, Eldora Speedway, Christopher Bell wound up in victory lane at the A main. Is this guy for real? I love him. Christopher Bell reminds me, yeah, Tony Stewart, AJ Foyt, Mario. Winning a NASCAR on the weekend that takes a weekend off and hits the dirt track in a sprint car. Heck yeah. Uh, well, the World of Outlaws did get their feature in in uh, Terre Haute. The sprint cars did not. They got rained out and postponed. Uh, and the World 100 rained out and postponed from September uh, at Eldora. They finally got that event off on Saturday. Actually, Friday's preliminary night was even rained out pushed to Saturday, so they had a doubleheader Saturday. This was the same format I took in a few years ago at Eldora. Tim McCready wound up winning. We're going to talk a little bit about Littlefoot uh, later in the show. Uh, I like underdog stories. I was out at the World 100, gosh, what is it, three, four years ago now, and we got there th for Thursday, Friday, and Saturday racing. Uh, Thursday, we got in the preliminary races of the Twin 25s. Friday got rained out, and that was pushed to Saturday. That was September of whatever it was, 2014 or 15. And good show because they started racing at about 11 a.m. and noon, something like that, and they raced all the heats, all the B-mains, the Twin 25s, and they cleared everything up, ran the heats, the B-mains, and the, the World 100. It was a huge, huge day of racing at Eldora. They did it again. McCready winds his way to victory lane. 51 grand, $51,000 for 100 laps at Eldora. Big race for pavement late models, not far from there. In Winchester, Indiana, Jeff Choquette had a uh, very narrow margin of victory after 400 laps on the high banks of Winchester. You ever look at uh, Eldora and uh, Winchester on a map? Yeah, you could have gone to the World 100 Saturday night easily. Or, or, yeah, easily made it over to Winchester uh, for the 400 Sunday afternoon and then back to Eldora Sunday night for the World of Outlaws sprint car race. Huh? I'm full of good ideas. I know the fellows are marking their calendars for next year if the dates line up and if we get rained out again. Let's talk about IMSA's finale, the Petit Le Mans that was run in Road Atlanta Saturday. Began in the morning, finished on Saturday night. This was a, this, you'd have thought this was a stock car race, the way this sucker finished. Um, Action Express number five Mustang sampling Cadillac ran out of fuel with only three turns left. They were leading the race. Uh, who was at the wheel? I think it was Philippe Albuquerque. But he had co-drivers Tristan Vaudier and uh, Christian Fittipaldi in the car as well. Uh, Pipo Durrani was leading in the uh, Tequila Patron machine, but he had a dump for fuel with less than five laps to go to. It was at tight. Uh, Wayne Taylor running third at the time. Action Express takes the lead. They ran out of fuel really just before the checkered flag. <coughs> Excuse me on that. I left the door wide open for Wayne uh, Taylor racing uh, to open it up. This was a thriller because I, I grew up watching some, some sports car races, uh, you know, back IMSA before the uh, split between the two where we had the DPs on one side of the world and the ALMS on the other side of the world, not really just dueling sports car series here in the U.S., and so many margins of victory were many, many seconds or sometimes many, many laps. Now, the uh, the big weekend in Road Atlanta didn't come to be until 19, uh, I think it was 1998. I think we're 20 years into this thing. So it's a relatively new event. I didn't see it when I was little. It didn't exist. But 
we see this more and more, and it speaks to the competitive nature of American sports car racing, where it is not a runaway. We have a competitive edge. And I was kind of used to these endurance races, whether you were in 10, 12, 24 hours, of these margins of victory that were pretty good. But I was okay with that. I understood the nature of the beast. This thriller Saturday night when the checkered uh, waved down in Road Atlanta, gosh, it was just one for the ages. How you, you think, you know, the top three – we're essentially nose to tail with just a few laps to go. One has to dump uh, dump out of the race, hit pit road, get a splash of fuel, and then the other one gambles and, yeah, runs out of fuel. A surprise winner. After 10 hours or, what is it, 1,000 kilometers, whatever it is, uh, they set a record, too, for the number of laps completed. I don't have the number in front of me. So in fuel-saving mode, doesn't really bode well or match up well with, uh, all, all the speed that they were turning. Usually those two are independent of each other. Uh, but the championships were crowned. Action Express's other car, the number 31 Wheel and Engineering Machine, is the prototype champion. Uh, Eric Curran and Philippe Nasser are the champs in prototypes. GT Le Mans, Gar Antonio Garcia and Jan Magnussen, champions there. And in GTD, Brian Sellers and Madison Snow shared the title. How cool a story would it have been if Catherine Legg could have gotten the championship? She did not even have a ride at the beginning of the year, had no set plans. At the end of the season, only four points behind Sellers and Snow for the championship. Uh, Catherine Legg, so I've seen her run sports cars about 10 years ago. She had a brutal leg-breaking crash in a sports car. Did see her run the Indy 500, I want to say 2013 or 14. Much like my World 100 story, I'm drawing a blank on the year. I can kind of narrow it down a little bit. But uh, talented talented lady, real good race car driver. Love to see her get, you know, nail that full-time ride and see a strong woman driver, uh, not just putting on a show, but actually competing with the guys and not a novelty, but a strong race car driver. There's a lot of them out there. Catherine Legg being one of them would love for her to pick up some sponsorship and some funding and land a uh, top tier ride sports car, IndyCar. She's good enough. She deserves it. Uh, well-spoken personable. She could be absolutely a superstar in the world of motorsports. Great finish to uh, road Atlanta on Saturday night. Now I was happy at Talladega yesterday to see Eric Almarola uh, go to victory lane Guy's a wheel man. We've been saying that for a lot of years. Deserves to win. He's had several within his grasp that slipped away. And, well, you know, just one week ago at Dover, Delaware, it could have, should have, would have won the race if Clint Boyer hadn't had that problem and crash late in the Dover race. Almarola likely would have wound up in victory lane anyway. Then the Stuart Haas cars do this performance yesterday. They all took their Wheaties over the weekend. They were head and shoulders. Shoulders. It was the four of them and then the rest of the field. Uh, the domination by Haas, you know, I, I know that's there because you see that sometimes where a group of cars or a team finds something at a restrictor plate track that gives them an advantage. We saw it years ago with the DEI cars. We've seen it over time. Sometimes it's Hendrick, sometimes it's Gibbs because they're constantly working on things. And when they find it, these guys are, can show their, their dominance. But the single-file parade, which we saw a lot of yesterday, we saw a lot of racing at the finish of Talladega, but it took us 400-and-something miles of follow the leader to try to get there. This is a result of uh, many things. It's not just one thing that you flick a switch uh, to make them race, but we, we've we got, I think, the, Several things come into play here. Let's go. I'm going to go through them with, with a little bit. I think the stages, which you know I dislike so much in uh, NASCAR's top tier, are a big factor on this. When with the plates are on the cars, it's real tough to lose track of anybody or get away from anybody. The 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 SHR cars did it when the other guys started racing, but before that they could stay at the front of the pack and really couldn't be passed too well. But they weren't broken away until the end of the race. And when you know that caution is coming, 
you can hang on to the pack and know when we used to run 500 miles, there was a little bit more desperation at the green flag. You didn't know when the caution would come. You did not want to lose that lead pack, that lead draft. Now, you know, when the first two cautions are coming and they're the second one falls past halfway in the race, that really helps you just kind of ride along. I know there's stage points at, at, uh, at stake, but some of these teams you know, some of the underdogs and some of the ones that are underperforming and locked out of the playoffs, and, you know, not, or at least out of the round of eight or the round of 12, I can see them just waiting until the end of the race because they can catch back up because they know when two cautions are coming. The plates do that essentially in itself as it really equalizes the field. And uh, this not being an elimination race, Kansas being next week, that's when you saw the desperation. You saw the desperation at Charlotte on the Roval. You see the des you saw the lack of desperation. This one, knowing that the 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 plates equalize the competition, the stages are there for the cautions. That to me gives you a lackluster race. Talladega, we've seen so many times over the years, uh, single file parade. Then they start shuffling it up in the last ten laps. A caution comes on the last lap. This thing ends under yellow. I felt like I wasted my afternoon watching the race. I didn't quite feel that way because we did finish this thing under green. I think when we finished it under yellow, the caution comes out with those crashes on the last lap, uh, that Chase Elliott, Matt Benedetto wreck. Then I would have thought I wasted three hours watching this race. I'm, I, I struggle with this because I don't want the safety of the drivers to be to be ever be a risk here we need to keep these guys safe but the cars kept rolling um uh, i like the fact that they did everything they could to finish the race under green kurt bush was likely going to win the race had the best car all day but uh ran out of fuel that's sometimes how it rolls and one was given to Almarola. he's had so many others one that got taken away from him i'm i'm kind of cool with that when you see a guy that could have should have would have won didn't win but gets one dropped in his lap. What the heck? He deserved it, and he had one of the four fastest cars all day. Good for Almarola. Uh, I was cheered for him when he won for Petty several years ago, but it was rain delayed and rain shortened down in Daytona for the Firecracker 400. Christopher Bell, my goodness, this guy's a throwback. I, you just Tony Stewart was the guy for the last generation that we saw do it, and we hadn't seen anybody before then. When you threw back to the likes of guys hopping from dirt to pavement to open wheel to open cockpit to stock cars. Those were days when I was a little kid, and Tony Stewart brought that back to life. Christopher Bell is currently doing it. The Xfinity Series had the week off. Where is he in the world of outlaws? He drove a wing sprint car at Eldora, of all places, winds up winning the, uh, win the A-Main last night at Eldora. This, if I was a fan... I'm a journalist, so I'll stay impartial. But, yeah, it'd be tough for me not to be buying a Christopher Bell T-shirt uh, if I was going to a dirt track or the big super speedways of NASCAR. Now, I talked a little bit about Tim McCready winning the World 100 against so much of Dirt Late Model's best that you see with these 18-wheelers rolling up and down the highway. You got to take a look at Timmy Mack's timeline on either Twitter or some of his social media pages where he's got a dually pickup truck, and I think it's a fifth-wheel trailer, pulling his late model. One late model looks like he could be pulling into any short track all across the country. The only thing that would have been better if that sucker was an open trailer. That would have been the mic drop for the World 100 win. As always, those trailers don't make those race cars go a bit faster. Oh, they're nice. Oh, they cost a lot of money, but they do not make your car go any faster uh winchester 400 good finish to that we spoke of that briefly i got to get back to winchester one of the premier short track and uh, the 400 lapper for the late models however sacrificing winchester may be opening up a door for me for the snowball derby come december never been to that i think 2018 might be the year and kind of a cool fanboy moment for me uh, we talked about, as I, I try to push the show a little bit on social media, give it a boost on different forms on the internet and talk about it and just generate a, a conversation. And you know, when it, we, we started this show and we talked so often how we, we modeled it after Motor Week Illustrated, the show WTBS, Saturday afternoons, 5.35 p.m. back in the 80s. 
Dave Despain was my guy. I liked how he reported Bob Barsha, big fan, produced by Ken Squire. Love that format. Love the wind tunnel format of Speed Channel. When the sh show here was launched, when we were Motor Week Live, we, we stole the title for Motor Week Illustrated. Then we became Speedway Report. Uh, Speed or Wind Tunnel was uh, Dave Despain's baby. So I tweeted out uh, yesterday. I was like, I'm working on Speedway Report. I remember uh, our, our uh, motivation and inspiration was Speed Channel and Wind Tunnel. Who tweets me back? None other than Dave Despain himself. We were able to have a few comments back and forth today uh, via Twitter. It was pretty cool. I'll admit to you, I had a little fanboy moment. I, I don't too much anymore. Uh, being around the garage area of motorsports uh, from Indy cars and uh, NHRA and NASCAR for so many years, even the big dirt races. I think it's cool. Love all these guys, but I don't swoon too often. Yet here I am for a reporter. Uh, Dave Despain actually acknowledged the show in my existence. Yeah. I, what can I tell you? I have a little fanboy moment. It's pretty cool. Loved him on WTBS. Thought he was fantastic. Loved him on Speed Channel. I loved he, oh, he could hop from just one discipline of motorsports to another. There's a lot of guys uh, could do that. Uh, Chris Economac, he was fantastic at it, where you could go to the Formula One grid and look at home. And you could go to the dirt track down here in South Carolina and still look at home. It was a racetrack. That's where you belonged. That's all I ever wanted to be. That's, what I, that's the vision I have. And I do feel at home when I'm at the racetrack. So Dave to Spain, by any chance, if you happen to see a broadcast of this, Thanks so much for the inspiration, the motivation when I was a kid. And now that I'm, I don't know if I'm growing up, we won't call that, but if I'm, I'm slightly older <laughs> and uh, we appreciate all you did for racing and the inspiration for this show where we don't put ourselves in strictly a drag racing, NASCAR, open wheel, uh, anything. I like the catch all style because I don't know a thing about stick and ball sports. If it's got an engine in it and goes fast, I'm in. So I don't know. I might as well just enjoy the, the all the racing that I watch and that enjoy and take in and don't worry too much because I can't talk football or baseball or basketball with anybody. I got no idea what's going on. It's got to be a race car and it's got to be a speedway. So in between our broadcasts, keep up on the world of racing with speedwayreport.com. Now this show and our past broadcasts are uploaded on the site. We've got some racing articles uh, to read. You can also find our past episodes in a bunch of places. I'll give them to you. Go look us up on Facebook. We're on the Racers Reunion Facebook page and the Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds page. As I talked about on Twitter, I'm at Speedway Pat or at Speedway Report. Uh, we're in the forum if, at racersreunion.com. This is where we started. I know a lot of you still follow us there, so head to racersreunion.com. Pull up the forum, and all of these shows are archived there. And then if you're connected to me on Google+, Plus, LinkedIn, or follow us on the YouTube channel that we have, either mine or Speedway Reports, they're all archived there. So just click on the internet, start surfing, you will find us. Big thanks to everyone on the Facebook live feed for joining on a conversation during the Tonight Show. And I want to stress to all of you, go see a race this weekend at a track near you. A lot of the autumn big, big uh, fall season closers are wrapping up short tracks and whatever major touring series are passing through. Don't let wintertime come without seeing one more race. Support your local track because that's the backbone of this sport. I want to thank all of the military past and present for the freedoms we enjoy as Americans in our daily life, including the simple things like bench racing right here on a Monday night. Freedom is not free, and a veteran paid that bill for us. To all of the men and women who are defending freedom and watching Speedway Report, take care of yourselves and come home soon. And as always, a special salute to the teachers, school staff, firefighters, police officers, and paramedics in our own communities. They are quiet and modest heroes every single day. God bless and thank you. You have been watching Speedway Report from the shores of Lake Norman in Race City, USA, Mooresville, North Carolina. Please like our Facebook page, Speedway Report with Patrick Reynolds, and follow me on Twitter at Speedway Pat. Now, if you're on Facebook, head on over right now to the Drag Racing List page. Uh, Racing and Rocking with DragList.com is coming up next. BP, JB, and BS got some cool music as we talk about some uh, straight line action. Now, we'll be back here live on Facebook in one week, Monday, October the 22nd. 
We will look at NASCAR Cup in Kansas, World of Outlaw Sprint Cars, Eastern States Weekend in Middletown, New York, the United States Grand Prix at Coda. Woo! And uh, gosh, we'll look at the short tracks and a whole lot more. Thank you all for joining us. Hey, I will see you next time.